desolation, no sympathy, no compassion. So I kept that feeling with me, and I could not believe when I got involved with Shane and read the emails that he was getting and all the hate that was out there, that that same hatred, that same prejudice was still going on. So that really fueled me to be involved. Did the bridegroom family have any comment or make any attempt to contact you while you were making the movie or try to somehow defend themselves? Um, first of all, I do want to say thank you all for coming. Yes. Um, it's, it's an honor to have you here. It's a little still you know, unreal to, to be here and to be seeing this. <laughs> Question. Linda and I both felt strongly that you know we wanted them to be a part of the film, and we reached out to them, and you know numerous times, and we haven't heard from them, and you know so there I think that they know about the documentary given that, but I don't know if they know about Tribeca. Or I don't know. I think they probably. But I'll say this. You know, Shane, you saw. Um, I didn't um, editorialize Shane. You, Shane, the way Shane is depicted in the film is exactly the way he treated them. You know, with love and respect and the most understanding that he could muster, you know, in his circumstances. Norman, the father, has never met Shane. Uh, we believe in redemption. We wanted this documentary to have a different ending. We called, we went through relatives, we left messages. We basically, our message was, we're coming to Indiana, Shane will be at the cemetery. If Norman, or Martha would like to come out there and just open a dialogue, just Norman extending his hand and saying, hi, I'm Norman, let's start talking. You were in love with my son, let's talk. That was our hope. Uh, it's a bad story, but we didn't make it a bad story. We can't bring Tom back, but what we told them was, you could have, our film could have a different ending. We thought that would be so powerful if they would change their hearts, and maybe Martha in particular could change her heart and be an example, uh, you know, of a mother who made a mistake and, and a cautionary tale, you know, don't let this happen again. You know, don't let another kid jump off a bridge or hang themselves in a closet or don't let what happened to Shane and Tom happen, you know, in your home. But that didn't happen. Anybody else? Um, this is a question for Shane. Um, so obviously, what you've been through is, I mean, is quite the obstacle of your life. My question is, what keeps you going? That's a good question. You know, I, I have to say, you know, Tom, I think that I owe it to him just to, you know, to keep going on and you know, just trying to, to find the strength. And I feel like after I posted the YouTube video and I heard from like thousands of people from all over the world, I've, I've found a lot of strength and, you know, just from people that I've never even met before. Um, so just to, to see the response from the YouTube video and just to see the response from even the first screening, it, it does give me a lot of strength. And I just, yeah, I just feel like I just got to keep going one day at a time. I think the film also kept you going. Okay. Yeah. He's had, he's had a purpose. Well, I mean, yes, after the YouTube video and I'm making this film, I feel like, I'm in, you know, a much better place, and I feel like this, making this film, was a healing process. And, I mean, it, it was hard at times, um, you know, sometimes she'd be in, like, the edit room, and she'd be watching all my, like, videos of me crying, and then she'd come in the other room where I was and check on me to make sure I'm okay. <laughs> we, we lost several editors who just could not take the grief videos. It's probably the, it's probably the largest collection I've ever heard of of human grief. I mean, compilation. I mean, Shane filmed himself because that was his way to stay close to Tom. Not because he was a big narcissist, but that was just, you know, he felt close to Tom when he was talking into that computer. And to sit through that was, um, it was painful. You know, it was very depressing. And, and I admire his bravery. I mean, he really turned over his life to us. Um, and he had to sit there every day and relive the most tragic parts of this film, you know, we might be working for a month on the day Tom died, and how he could come to work, you know, and be around that day after day, I don't know, but he's very, he's a very great kid. And I just want to introduce Alex from the film, she's here. Thank Um, you know, she was with Tom 
Um, and, and the same for Alice. She was with Tom and fell off the roof. She's had to carry that with her. Uh, she's had to expose all of this and relive that over and over and over. And she's just beautiful inside now. Thank you, Alex, for being here. Over here. Uh, there's one in the middle. Yeah, I have two questions. Um, is this still like a closure for you? And what happened to the little door? <laughs> <laughs> You're the third person to ask me about um, the dog. Uh, <laughs> Justin Bobby, he is. When was that a pet hotel for a couple he's days? He's alive and well, he's with my dog. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have, I have some friends that are watching him. And so, yeah, I was able to, to keep Justin. And um, I'm so happy that I have him. Because especially right after following Tom's accident, you know, just having him there was really comforting. But but they were with us all during editing. Oh, yeah, Justin, Justin was, yeah, he was there and Charles Blood every Tom. day. I, I wanted to bring him, but I didn't maybe think it was appropriate. <laughs> I don't know if I'd say it's like closure. I just feel like, you know, like I was saying, it's just kind of like one day at a time. And just everything that's happened, like with the YouTube video and this film, I, I feel like there's a lot of positive things that have come from this. And so with that being said, I just, you know, I feel like I'm in a much better place. And so I don't, yeah, I don't know if it's closure. I just... It's a new beginning, sort of. Yeah. And it's a, new, a bit of a chapter. Chapter. Yeah, I saw it as like a testament to him and you know his life, and it's it feels really good for me just you know that everyone needs to see the, the guy that I fell in love with, and I feel like after people see this film, you know they they fall in love with him too, and that makes me feel really good. The man in the cap. That's amazing. That's and what we want. Yeah. <laughs> Hearing things like that, like, it just, I mean, it's just so touching, but it just, again, it provides so much strength and it, it makes me want to just keep telling this story. And if just one person, like what you just told me, then this was worth it. So, it's amazing. And, yeah, so the, the idea of, like, that with the film, if, yeah. That's what we, how long did that well? We, <laughs> we uh, you know, this was our hope uh, that this would happen, and we know it's occurred because we've gotten a lot of messages on the internet. We hope all of you will tweet about it and spread the word. You saw all the emails about Shane's YouTube video, but there's so many gay people overseas that we've heard from who are in much more dire straits than gays in the United States. And the reason I most wanted to do this film, frankly, is because as much as I, you know, love, Liberace and Harvey Milk, and I still felt the gay community did not have their love story, did not have their Kate Winslet and Leo DiCaprio, they don't have their Titanic, they don't have their love story with Alan McGraw and Ryan O'Neill for the older generation, and, and we don't pretend to be those movies, but this is a gay love story that shows heterosexuals, it's not different, you know, this is a, this is, look at this couple, who wouldn't want to be this couple? And I think there are millions of people who could tip on this love story. I do. I, I, it, it, I don't think they know what they've been opposing. And I think there are many people who don't know what they've been opposing. They think they're opposing the gay pride parade. And there's nothing wrong with the gay pride parade, but it scares some people. So they need to also see Shane and Tom. And here's a couple of good Christian boys from small town America who work hard, who go to church, who love each other, who don't drink or smoke, who are faithful and... You know, so what, what better couple to hang your hats on? And you know, I mean, what's not to like? And so, you know, I think I thank you so much for what you said. I hope this is a the thing that would make Shane and me the most proud. And, and I know it's my goal is that everybody who's.